I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture that uses the kinds of accessibility relations that we mentioned last week. We've been drawing, so at the beginning of the semester we were drawing things in terms of knowledge sets, but now we can also use arrows. So we'll represent worlds using points, and I'll, we'll sometimes draw arrows between them. And what it means is that, well, when we just have a single agent, if there's an arrow going from world one to world two, that means that world two is compatible with everything the agent knows in world one. Put slightly differently, everything the, the agent knows in world one is true in world two. This is the same thing as saying that world two is part of the knowledge set for that agent of world one. Now in this case we have two agents because it's a case of common knowledge and common knowledge is only interestingly different from knowledge, just knowledge at all levels when there's a few people involved. So we're actually going to have two accessibility relations. And I'm going to draw them with different colors. So I'm going to say that Roman's accessibility relation is a red, it uses a red arrow. So if there's a red arrow going from one world to another, that means that, for instance here, world two is compatible with everything Roman knows at world one. However, if we use the green arrow, I'm going to take the green arrow to indicate Columbus knowledge. So if there's a green arrow going from one world to another, that means the second world is compatible with Columbus knowledge at the first. So what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing a picture of the situation. And what we're going to see is that once we start filling out the picture, we start to get into trouble. So let's start with the actual world. One thing that's supposed to be true with the actual world is that the mast looks 300 centimeters tall to Roman. So let's write that down. Looks 300 centimeters to Roman. That's one thing that's true. It's also true that it's in fact 300 centimeters, but that doesn't that doesn't actually matter for us now. But Roman also knows some things or knows the limits of what he knows about how things look to Columba. In particular, he knows that if it looks a particular height to him, then for all he knows, it could be slightly shorter. It, it could look slightly shorter to Columba. So for instance, consider the world where it looks 297 centimeters to Columba. He knows that this world is compatible with everything that he knows here. So that means we need to draw an arrow between the worlds. So let's draw the red arrow, because remember the red arrow is representing Roman's accessibility relation. So this second world, where it looks 297 centimeters to Columba, that's compatible with everything that Roman knows in the actual world. But now let's think about what things are like for Columba in this other world. So here things look a certain way to Columba. But remember, it's public information to both of them that if it looks to be a certain height to them, it could be slightly shorter for the other person. So in this world, Columba can go through exactly the same reasoning that Roman just went through. She can say, well, it looks 297 centimeters to me, but it's common knowledge that if it looks one way to me, it could look slightly shorter to Roman. So let's now consider this other world, this third world, where it looks 294 centimeters to Roman. This is a world compatible with what Columba knows here, because she knows that if it looks one way to her, then it could be slightly shorter to Roman. So now we need to draw an accessibility relation. We're using the green because it's Columba's accessibility relation. This is saying that how things are in this world is compatible with what Columba knows in this world. But of course, in this world, Roman can go through exactly the same reasoning as he did in the first and Columba did in the second. So he can think, well, it looks this way to me, for all I know, but for all I know, it looks a little bit shorter to Columba. So there's going to be a fourth world where it looks 291 centimeters to Columba. And this is going to be compatible with what Roman knows in this third world. So let's draw another arrow, again the red one, because it's Roman's accessibility relation. And you can see that the reasoning can be repeated, that you could keep going. Now obviously I'm not going to 
do that. But let's imagine, we can see that we're going to get to a point, say here, where it looks 102 centimeters to Roman. Hopefully I've done my, my maths right. But again, for all he knows, it could be slightly shorter, or could look slightly shorter to Columba. So there's going to be another world over here where it looks 99 centimeters to Columba. So we know that somewhere all over here, there's going to be an accessibility ratio going here. And then because this is compatible with everything Roman knows, it's going to be a red arrow going here. Okay, so we should already think that things have gotten a little bit weird because while well, we've just gone through this chain of accessibility relations going back and forth between what they know in the different worlds, and if we keep this chain going on long enough, we get to a world where it looks where it looks like to Columba the mast is 99 centimeters tall. Notice this is of course shorter than 100 centimeters, and it's supposed to be public information that's 100 centimeters. So this is already a little bit weird. But remember as well that we said that appearances are not necessarily deceiving here. Each person knows that if it looks to be a certain height to them, then it's compatible with what they know that it is actually that height. So in particular that means that in this world where it looks to be 99 centimeters to Columba, well then there is a world compatible with what she knows where it actually is 99 centimeters. So let me just draw the world in here. So the tree is, all right, equals 99 centimeters to say, in this world, the mass is 99 centimeters. And this world is compatible with what Columba knows here. But now notice what's happened, because if there's a world that's compatible with Columba's knowledge here, where the tree is 99 centimeters, that means that here it's true that for all she knows, the tree is 99 centimeters. But if for all she knows, the tree is 99 centimeters, then it's not true that she knows that it's not 99 centimeters. She doesn't know that it's greater than 100 centimeters because there's a possibility here, open to her, where it's less than that. So we can see that in this world, it's not the case that Columba knows that the tree is greater than 100 centimeters. Sorry, the mast is, is greater than 100 centimeters. I take it you'll know why I said, why I said tree. So I'm just going to write this K here to represent knowledge, and I'm going to write the C under it to represent Columba's information. So what this says is that in this world, it's not the case that Columba knows the mast is taller than 100 centimeters. But let's now trace the consequences of this back up the tree. So we said the red arrow here is representing Roman's knowledge. If there's a world compatible with what Roman knows here, where Columba doesn't know that it's greater than 100 centimeters, then it can't be that here Roman knows that Columba knows it's greater than 100 centimeters because it's compatible with his knowledge here that she doesn't know that. There's a world where she doesn't know it's greater than 100 centimeters here, so it can't be true that here Roman knows that Columba knows it's greater than 100 centimeters. So what we have is it's not the case that Roman knows that Columba knows it's greater than 100 centimeters. That's true at this world here. And again the consequences are going to ramify up. So there's going to be some long string, I'm not going to write out the whole string, but it's going to be true here. That it's not the case that Columba knows, that Roman knows, that Columba knows, that, that Roman knows, dot dot dot, that it's greater than 100 centimeters. That's going to be true at the third world we considered. If this is true here, and this is compatible with what Ro Roman knows here, then Roman doesn't know this because there's a world compatible with what he knows where it's false. So here it's false that Roman knows, that Columba knows, that Roman knows, that Columba knows, dot dot dot, 
at the mass of 100, greater than 100 centimeters. Again, we're going to get another string like that over here. So it's not the case that Columba knows, that Roman knows, that Columba knows, that Roman knows, so on, that the mass is greater than 100 centimeters. And finally, there's going to be, we get back to the original world we started with. Let's box that off. I'm not going to calculate right now, right now how many different uh, knowledge operators there are going to be, but we know that for some string, it's going to be that it's not the case that Roman knows, Columba knows, that Roman knows, that Columba knows, so on, that the tree is 100 centimeters tall. This is going to be the problematic thing for the idea that public information is common knowledge. Because what we showed, in fact, if you think about it, by thinking about what this says, is that actually mutual knowledge gives out at a certain point. So we know that there's a certain string of these alternating between Roman nose, Columba nose, Roman nose, Columba nose, such that it's false that that string obtains for the proposition we're interested in, that the mast is greater than 100 centimetres. This is incompatible with the idea that it's common knowledge that the mast is greater than 100 centimetres. Because remember, if it's common knowledge that the mass is greater than 100 centimetres, then it's mutually known at all levels. In particular, they know that they know that they know that they know that they know and so on, that the mass is greater than 100 centimetres. So however long this string is supposed to be, we know that if it were common knowledge that the mass were greater than 100 centimetres, then they should mutually know to this degree that the mass is 100 centimetres. But then this would be true after all. If it was mutually known to whatever level this is that the mass is 100 centimetres, then in particular, well since they both know that they both know that they both know that they both know and so on, it would follow that Roman knows, Columba knows, Roman knows, Columba knows, and so on. So this proposition would follow from the claim that it's common knowledge that the mass is greater than 100 centimeters. But we just ran through an argument by zigzagging between these different worlds that seems to show that this proposition is actually false. This consequence of the idea that it's common knowledge that the mass is greater than 100 centimeters is false. So then it looks like if all our theses are true, it just can't be common knowledge that the mass is greater than 100 centimeters. That's the impressionistic version of the argument. So a picture of it using accessibility relations. What we did was we zigzagged between worlds where it looks slightly shorter to the, to the other person. We know we can go back and forth like that until we find a world where the tree looks shorter than it's supposed, than it's supposed to be public information. Because looks aren't deceiving, we know that there's a world compatible with what that person, Columba, here knows where the tree is exactly how, as tall as it looks to be. That means there, Columba doesn't know that it's greater than 100 centimeters. So Roman doesn't know that Columba knows that. So Columba doesn't know that Roman knows that Columba knows that. And so on. And so it percolates all the way back up until we get to the original world we started with. And we can see there's just going to be some chain of knowledge operators alternating between Romans and Columbas. So set that chain applied to the proposition that the mass is greater than 100 centimeters gives you a false proposition. But as I just sort of impressionistically explained, the proposition that this, this iterated knowledge claim holds is just a consequence of the idea that the mass is taller than 100 centimeters. So if this were false, it would just follow that it couldn't be common knowledge. And that's exactly how the argument is supposed to work. So we've seen the picture. In the next video, we're going to go on and see how the argument works in something like premise and conclusion form.